before we move on to the general cases, I just want to give you a quick overview about imaging of dementia. So it's something that you're familiar with. You might see one or two questions about this. The two mainstays of dementia imaging are FDG PET, which you're looking at glucose metabolism, and you're typically looking at areas which are which have decreased metabolism, and then amyloid imaging, in which you're looking for direct definition of amyloid. Uh, you may see uh, previously they were using a, an agent called Pittsburgh Compound B, and uh, now there are some direct amyloid tracers uh, that you can use. These entities can be extremely difficult to differentiate, and often you have to use atlas-based registration to compare it to a normal database so that you know how much it deviates from normal. Uh, this is an image uh, taken from a paper in radiographics which shows Alzheimer's disease. In the top row here, you have FDG PET, and you see that there are areas in the parietal lobes and temporal lobes that have decreased glucose activity. If you do the normalization to an atlas, uh, this is showing you in purple and blue uh, areas that are decreased from normal. And uh, here's just a surface overlay showing decreased activity in those same areas. So involvement of the frontal and parietal lobes is what you're looking for. Uh, here we have a comparison between uh, FDG PET and uh, Pittsburgh Compound B uh, from AGNR. And what you'll see is that uh, for FDG PET, you have decreased uh, activity in the temporal lobes and parietal lobes. And uh, then those are the areas that are elevated on Pittsburgh Compound B. If you look, a normal control uh, has, doesn't have those areas. Uh, so the notion is that uh, the indirect amyloid imaging agents would be more specific. In Lewy body dementia, what you'll see is you have areas that are sparing between the frontal and parietal lobes with involvement of frontal and uh, parietal and occipital cortex. Here again, you see the normalized uh, areas where there's involvement of the occipital lobes. Uh, Lewy body dementia is one of the only dimensions to involve the occipital lobes. There's a form of Alzheimer's which involves the occipital lobes, but uh, that would be less common. Uh, here you see frontotemporal dementia. Again, you have a PET across the top and a normalized overlay, and you'll see that uh, what you have is decreased activity in the frontal lobes, which are uh, affected, and then you also have decreased activity in the temporal lobes, so decreased PET activity there. That one's easy to remember because the areas of abnormal activity are in the main frontotemporal dementia. Uh, so quickly to recap all the neurodegenerative diseases that we've seen, uh, we've seen Huntington's disease, which presents with abnormal movements and dementia. Uh, on imaging, you have caudate and basal ganglia atrophy. Typically, you'll have a family member who has Huntington's disease. It gets worse uh, with each generation. Uh, we have PSP, in which you get atrophy of the midbrain. So you see this humming word appearance where you get a concave appearance to the midbrain. Uh, these patients present with Parkinsonian and optic symptoms. Uh, we have MSA, or multi-system atrophy, in which we have hot cross bond sign. So you'll see that uh, in the pons. You see this area where the pons is atrophied, and then there's abnormal symbol in the shape of these hot cross bonds. Uh, there's a multiple uh, overlapping syndromes, which can have this appearance. Uh, we have CJD, in which you have abnormal signal in the basal ganglia, often symmetric, involving the caudates. Uh, you have the hockey stick sign here in the medial thalamus, and uh, that can be familial, spontaneous, or acquired. And uh, then for Parkinsonian imaging, we have uh, DAT scans, in which the normal scan has uptick in the caudate and patamen. Uh, in the abnormal patients, you lose the patamen, so you go from a comma, which is normal, to a period, which is abnormal. Uh, finally, for dementia imaging, you want to think about the areas which are involved. Uh, for Alzheimer's disease, the areas which are involved are the temporal and parietal lobes. When you have bluey bodies, you involve the occipital cortex, and for frontal temporal dementia, you involve the frontal and temporal lobes, just like the name. Uh, there are a number of other causes of dementia, but uh, those may have variable uh, imaging findings. Uh, you can image amyloid. Uh, you'll see Pittsburgh compound B mentioned, although now they're direct amyloid imaging agents.